Tine Brahma Hidaya Adikavaye Muyantiya Suraya Tejo Rari Madam Yatabini Mayo Yatri Sargo Misha Dam Nasvena Sadhana Rasta Kuhakam Satyam Param Di Mahi O my Lord Sri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O all pervading personality Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna. And the primal cause of all causes. And the primal cause of all of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge onto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge onto the heart of The original living being. The original. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are as one is bewildered by the illusory representation of water seen on fire or land seen on water, only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita, Kaitravutra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Vedyam Vastavam Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Munam Shivadam Tapa Trayon Munam Shimad Bhagavata Amuni Krite Kimba Pare Ishwaraha Kimba Pare Ishwaraha Sadyo Hidi Abarudya Tetra Sadyo Hidi Abarudya Tetra Krite Bihi Sususabis Dakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from an illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturo galitam falam Sukamukad amrita dravya samritam Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam Muhur aho raska bhuvi bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of desire to of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of desire to it emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shimad Bhagavatam. I'm sorry. Shinvata Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. 
Vidyan Taksto Hibadrani Vidunoti Srihit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is it self righteous activity? And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about the Bhagavatam, as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, kamaloba dayas chaye, chete itara navidam, stitvam sadve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogitaha bhagavat tattva vigyanam muksanga shijayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya siyante chasyakaramani drista evat manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 16, Verse Number 10. Sutta Uvacha Yada Pariksit Kuru Jangale Vasat. Kalim pravistam nija chakra vartite. Nisam yavartam manati priyam tata. Sarasanam sam yoga sondir adade. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. Sutta Goswami said while Maharaj Prikshit was residing in the capital of the Kuru Empire, the symptoms of the age of Kali began to infiltrate within the jurisdiction of state. When he learned about this, he did not think of matter very palatable. He did not, he did not think the matter very pal palatable. This did, however, give him a chance to fight. He took up his bow and arrows and prepared himself for military activities. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivinoda Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The state administration of Maharaj was so perfect that he was sitting in his capital peacefully. But he got the news that the symptoms of the age of Kali had already infiltrated into the jurisdiction of a state, and he did not like this news. What are the symptoms of the age of Kali? One, illicit connection with women. Two, indulgence in meeting. Three, intoxication. And four, taking pleasure in gambling. 
The age of Kali literally means the age of quarrel. And the above mentioned four symptoms in human society are the root causes for all kinds of quarrel. Mm. Maharaj Pariksit heard that some of the people of the state had already taken to those symptoms, and he wanted to take immediate steps against such causes of unrest. This means that at least up to the regime of Maharaj Pariksit, such, such symptoms of public life were practically unknown. And as soon as they were slightly detected, he wanted to root them out. The news was not palatable for him, but in a way it was because Maharaj Pariksit got a chance to fight. There was no need to fight with small states because everyone was peaceful, peacefully under his subordination. But Kali Yuga mistreats, uh, but Kali Yuga miscreants gave his fighting spirit a chance for exhibition. The perfect Chatri king is always jubilant as soon as he gets a chance to fight, just as a sportsman is eager when there is a chance for a sporting match. It is, so, it is, it is no argument that in the age of Kali, such symptoms are predestined. If so, then why was there preparation for fighting out of such symptoms? If so, why, uh, then why was there preparation for fighting out such symptoms? Such arguments are offered by lazy and unfortunate men. In the rainy season, rain is predestined, and yet people take precautions to protect themselves. Similarly, in the age of Kali, the symptoms, as above mentioned, are sure to infiltrate into social life. But it is the duty of the state to save the citizens from the association of the agents of the age of Kali. Maharaj Pariksit wanted to punish the miscreants indulging in the symptoms of Kali and thus save the innocent citizens who were in habit uh, by culture of, no of religion, who were pure in habit by culture of religion. It is the duty of the king to give such protection. And Maharaj Brikshit was perfectly right when he prepared himself to fight. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Well, we see today that there's a lot of quarreling going on. And uh, last night there was a debate between the vice president, Mike Pence, and the candidate, uh, uh, Kamala Harris. And the last question that the, that the uh, facilitator asked was, uh, she, she read a letter by a young uh, eight or 10 year old girl, school girl, and, she, and the, the little girl asked the question. She said, when I watch television, all I see is people arguing. And, and whenever politicians get together, they're just arguing. She said, why is this? So both Kamala Harris and Mike Pence gave uh, phony type of answers in a sense. Mike Pence's point was that, yes, we have a free uh, a society. We have certain freedoms in society. We're allowed to express our opinions. And uh, therefore, um, sometimes there's differences of opinion, and both sides are allowed to express their opinions. And, and yes, there will be argument, but that's part of our freedoms in this country. But in the end, after all arguments are there and bickering and everything, we join together in this great company, country to, uh, uh, to protect the, the interests of, of the people. Well, that was one answer. And Kamala Harris gave another type of phony answer, uh, congratulating this girl for such a nice question, blah, blah, blah. But neither of them actually explained why there's so much arguing. And here today, Prabhupada says, there are, uh, he said, what are the symptoms of the age of Kali? One, illicit connection with women. Two, Indulgence in meat eating, three, intoxication, and four, 
taking pleasure in gambling. The age of Kali literally means the age of quarrel, and the above-mentioned four symptoms in human society are the root causes for all kinds of quarrel. There it is. There's the answer. That neither Mike Pence or Kamala Harris were able to uh, give. So, Kali Yuga is the age of hypocrisy and quarrel. And what is hypocrisy? It was the connection with women, indulgence in meat eating. So, by connection with women, there's uncleanliness of the mind and uncleanliness of the body for both men and women. And indulgence in meat eating, it's uh, unnecessarily killing innocent animals, brutalizing them, and when, that, when, when one eats their flesh uh, with the blood in it, they are basically uh, cursed. Like, if you were forcibly, let's say, kidnapped by someone, and then they tortured you to death, what would be the last thing you would think of? Well, if you were a devotee, the last thing you would think of is Krishna. But most people are not devotees. The last thing they think of is, I, I curse this person. You know. So when you eat the blood of an animal that's been killed against its will, and all the animals are killed against their will, there's a curse. And when someone eats their flesh, uh, they have committed... A very sinful act. In fact, in fact it's said in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, Gopi Prinita Matsaram. Uh, that means that killing a, uh, a, uh, a cow is, is one of the worst things that you can go, do. Let me see if I can find that verse. Gopi Prinita, Prinita, Prinita Matsaram. Uh, in 696. So, let's see what Prabhupada says there. Yeah, he says, of all kinds of animal killing, the killing of cows is most vicious because the cow gives us all kinds of pleasure by supplying milk. Cow slaughter is an act of the grossest type of ignorance. In the Vedic literature, Rig Veda 9.4.64, the words gopi prinita matsaram indicate that one who, being fully sat satisfied by milk, is desirous of killing the cow, is in the grossest ignorance. There is also a prayer in the Vedic literature that states, Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanahitaya Cha Jagatitaya Krishna Govindaya Namo Namaha. My Lord, you are the well wisher of the cows and the Brahmanas, and you are the well wisher of the entire human society and world. Vishnu Purana 1, 1965. The purport is that the spe that special mention is given in that prayer for the protection of the cows and the Brahmanas. Brahmanas are the symbol of spiritual education, and cows are the symbol of the most viable food. These two living creatures, the Brahmanas and the cows, must be given all protection. That is real advancement of civilization. In modern human society, spiritual knowledge is neglected and cow killing is encouraged. It is to be understood, then, that human society is advancing in the wrong direction and is clearing the path to its own condemnation. A civilization which guides the citizens to become animals in their next lives is certainly not a human civilization. The present human civilization is, of course, grossly misled by the modes of passion and ignorance. It is very dangerous. It is a very dangerous age, and all nations should take care to provide the easiest process, Krishna consciousness, to save humanity from the greatest danger. Well, we see what's the greatest danger. They're all going to take birth, all these meat eaters as animals in their next life and get slaughtered also in the same way that they were they're slaughtering and eating the flesh of innocent cows so that's a very so it's no wonder that there's so much quarrel and then point three is intoxication people get intoxicated and they they, they do so kinds of cr so many crazy things they have accidents and kill other people with their car 
They uh, kill people out of anger. They get severe arguments. And this is going on a lot in India because the alcoholic problem in India is severe right now. And it's been building up over and over to the point where in certain villages, there may be three or four alcohol shops in a village. Is that true, Prabhu? <laughs> which, part of in, which part of India you come from? Delhi. Is it true in Delhi? Is there plenty of uh, liquor shops in Delhi? And, and owned by government. Owned by the government as well. So that people cannot cheat on the rates. Yeah. The rates are they want to make it cheap so everyone can buy it. And available everywhere. You drive few kilometers or few miles. Yeah. And then, uh, the taking pleasure in gambling. Uh, so many big casinos nowadays. Uh, uh, the biggest are in Las Vegas. But you know, there's, there's casinos all, all over Seattle. There are casinos. Yeah. So people are gambling. They're eating meat. They're intoxicating. And they're engaged in illicit connections. What do you expect? This, these are the causes of, uh, the root causes for all kinds of quarrel, Prabhupada writes. So as soon as Maharaj Briggs had heard that there were uh, citizens in his kingdom that were engaged in these type of activities, he immediately took steps uh, against such causes of unrest. Well, today there's unrest in America all over the place. Why? Because of these six symptoms, of these four symptoms of sinful activity. And these things are being supported by the government. No wonder people are revolting. And uh, so, as soon as these symptoms were slightly detected, Maharaj Parikshad wanted to root them out. The news was not palatable for him. But in a way, it was, because it's a chance for him to fight. So, not, uh, uh, one other point I wanted to make here. Uh, okay, it says, in the age of Kali, the symptoms, as above mentioned, are sure to infiltrate into social life. But it is the duty of the state to save the citizens from the association of the agents of the age of Kali. Well, that's not being done. Today, it's infiltrated the social life all over the place, especially through digital technology. Every place, there's nonsense. You have, and, and it's become easy for any nonsense person to publicize nonsense. You look at TikTok. Any idiot that has a computer now can make a movie, and a movie of them acting like a jerk right? And people enjoy watching those things, you know, and, and all kinds of disgusting things. Uh, and anybody can do it now. Before, there was, you know, only, the movies are only made by these big companies, and Disney and MGM and so forth. Now, any jerk can make a movie, right? And have it immediately on the internet so thousands of people can see it. And most of the movies they make are complete nonsense. When I say movie, it's, it's a movie, but it's only maybe one minute or 10 minutes. At the, I don't think it's 10 minutes, but it's one minute or three minutes or five minutes. But it's all nonsense. So, therefore, uh, to save the citizens from the association of the agents of the age of Kali. Well, now the agents of the age of Kali are facilitated with digital technology. And, and that's the point. The whole thing is unnecessary. People don't need this, but they become addicted to it. And little kids get addicted to it. They can see all kinds of videos now, nonsense. So, uh, and thus save the innocent citizens who were pure in habit by culture of religion. It is the duty of the king to give such protection and Maharaj Brixit was perfectly right when he prepared himself to fight. So we don't really have politicians that want to protect the people. 
uh, they might want to protect one thing, and then the, and then there's some other thing that they give free reign to. So it's it's they pick and choose certain things. Like for example, uh, the Republican Party uh, wants to stop abortions because it's extremely sinful. Well, that's good. But on the other hand, they support the the digital technologies. And uh, although Trump wants to stop China from having con control of TikTok, but he's going to let some American company buy it. So it doesn't really stop it. Uh, people have to have a, a clear-cut understanding why there's quarrel, why there's so much hypocrisy. It's because of these four pillars of sinful activity. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? Yes. Okay, you have to speak in the microphone. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, uh, why, Maharaj, the quarrel is even within the devotees' uh, community? Like, in some extreme cases, devotees don't want to talk to each other or they don't, don't want to see the face of each other. Like, uh, they are trying to follow all the rules. Uh, those are symptoms. And how we can prevent ourselves not to indulge into this uh, effect of Kali. Yeah, well, this explained Bhagavad Gita. Well, first of all, they might not be following the four regulative principles properly. Okay. Uh, and besides the four regulative principles, there's ten principles of offenses against the holy name. Right? Like blasphemy devotees who have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name, the first one. That sometimes is very easily... Uh, let's say, violated by people, people who are chanting Hare Krishna, but they might, uh, you know, blaspheme someone who has dedicated their whole life to propagating the holy name. And, and then also, uh, they might use the holy name to uh, try and purge sinful activity. In other words, they premeditate the simple activity, and then they think, well, let me chant Hare Krishna to get rid of it. That's the seventh offense, right? Uh, to commit sinful activity in the name of, uh, on the strength of chanting the holy name of the Lord. So those are two big ones, and the offenses against the holy name. Uh, and then, so we have to look there, the ten offenses against the holy name. We have to look at the th four regulative principles, or actually there's eight, right? Because four things you shouldn't do, four things you should do. So if they violate one of the things that you shouldn't do, and also violate one of the things that you should do, so the, that all that uh, leads to, uh, that's, it's called hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is you make a vow to, do, to follow these things, and then you break them. So that's, that's, that's being a hypocrite. And then hypocrisy leads to arguing. What is the hypocrisy? People are lying, and they're arguing that they're not lying. So this often happens, you know, in the materialists, but it can happen in devotees also. It's because of breaking principles. And there are a lot of principles, right? Fasting on holy days, and fasting on ecodicy, and this thing, and that thing. There's so many rules and regulations we have to follow. And by breaking those rules and regulations, uh, we develop that belligerent attitude to, you know, how dare you say that to me? You know, who are you to tell me? What have you done for Prabhupada? You know, they make all these types of statements, uh, and they, they try and hide behind some achievements, maybe, or they're just plain envious of other people's achievements, whatever. So then you also have. Lust, anger, greed, illusion, envy, and madness. So, the, so now we had four regulative principles. We have the ten offenses against the holy name. And then you have these six very detrimental things, lust, anger, greed, so forth. Uh, so uh, you put that all in the mix, 
So th these are the causes of quarrel and dissension and, and people refusing to cooperate and arguing. Okay. Then, uh, and then the educational system. The educational system today teaches kids that it's okay to speculate. And yet the mud the butt as many opinions as many truths right so when you begin to speculate you very easily go off track from krishna consciousness so uh right now uh with our kids uh, we're studying we're going to compare uh einstein to uh isaac newton it's very interesting to do these things because these are two top intellectual and scientists and philosophers in the, in the last uh, 500 years, They're both on the top, especially Newton. You know. 500 years ago, it's amazing what the things that he discovered and, and wrote about. But Newton was different than Einstein. Einstein didn't really believe in a personal God. He didn't believe in an afterlife. And and uh, he also uh, thought it was okay to, to speculate. Right? Whereas Newton, he believed in God and a personal God and a transcendental God. And also he connected his scientific work to the Bible. And he was convinced that God exists because he saw uh, design and necessity of intervention. In other words, he saw that somebody, and it's got to be God, uh, who's the supreme scientist, supreme intellectual, supreme personality of Godhead, it was transcendental, he created the world in a synchronized way and following laws of and he made those laws. So therefore, the, 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 all the planets stay in orbits, in perfect orbits for millions of years, and it's all maintained. And so many things he noticed that, and he, he made the argument of design. There's a, there's a designer that designed all these things. And he's, he's a supremely intelligent, uh, unique person. No one is e greater than him or equal to him. He said all these things. And he said that God can interfere whenever he wants into the affairs of the, the world. Whenever there's something that doesn't go right, just like Krishna says, yada yada hi dharma sya glanir bhavati bharata abhyutta nam dharma sya tadatma nam shijam yaham. Whenever there is a rise of uh, irreligion and concomitant decline in religiosity, Krishna says, he appears. He appears to annihilate the miscreants and uh, deliver the, or protect the devotees and reestablish the principles of religion. That's an intervention. And, and uh, uh, Newton argued that God can intervene, and intervene at any time that he wants. So it says here, yada yada hi dharma sya. Whenever and wherever there is a decline in religious practice, O descendant of Bharata, and a predominant rise of irreligion, at that time I descend myself. So that's called an intervention, right? Or he sends, uh, or he sends another incarnation of himself, or he sends, or he empowers someone like uh, King Parikshit or or somebody to uh, straighten out the situation. So. Newton believed all these things, and he, he wrote about it, and he gave biblical evidence for it, and so forth, right? And he came to, to Einstein, he didn't believe in half, not even half of these things, right? So we see how there's a deterioration in the quality of people, even though they're great scientists, but Newton was a, a God-believing scientist, and Einstein was half believing in some kind of Mayavad, so-called Spinoza's God, you know, and with a lot of misconceptions, right? 
So it's good for our kids to, to know this. You know, we see that you have someone who's a, uh, although Newton is not a pure devotee, but he was, he was very, very, uh, Krishna, he was very Krishna conscious, very Krishna conscious, just by reading the Bible. And he studied the Bible. And he said that the world would come to an end in 2060. And he lived 500 years ago. <laughs> and how did he figure that out? It's very interesting. But anyway, that's, that's not science. That's uh, his prophecy uh, based on his reading of the Bible. Of course, he's wrong. But he was very right about God as the master creator or masterful creator. Okay, and no more questions. Yes. Yes. You avoid their association. You give you give respect from a distance and avoid their association. Well, you could try and convince them if you're strong enough philosophically to not do that. But if you're not strong enough, you'll just get into an argument. So you'll be down on their level. If you're strong enough to stop them, that's good. You know, I mean, strong, you know, as far as purity and understanding Shastra. But if you're not strong enough, to, you just get into an argument. So it's better not to get into an argument with uh, irrational rascals. Right? And a lot of people are irrational rascals. <laughs> they don't. They don't stick to shastra at all. They just. They make their own interpretation of it. So, Prabhupada said, "At all costs, try and avoid an argument. And if it's not possible, then you have to be ready to fight." Uh, it's like they did everything not to fight. Uh, and Pandavas and Krishna did everything to, to not have a fight with the Kurus. But when it became very clear that the Kurus were not listening to any good advice and they were, they, were, they were asking for a fight, so then they had to have a fight. Right. So you, in your case, I would avoid getting into an argument with someone. You just, you know, you understand, okay, this person, there's something wrong with them. Maybe they'll be straightened out by someone else, but uh, I'm not going to argue with them. And I'll just give them the respect, but keep my distance. Haribo. Okay.